Hey guys, it's me, Ms. Norris, and today, in honor of Women's History Month, I'd like to share the story of the amazing woman, Billie Jean King. In the story, Billie Jean, how tennis, how tennis star Billie Jean King changed women's sports, we hear the story of Billie Jean King and what she did for women's sport, for sports, for women in sports. And this story was written in 2019 by Mara Rockliffe, and it was illustrated by Elizabeth Baddeley. And if you're ready to hear the story, I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. Billie Jean, how tennis star Billie Jean King changed women's sports. Anything Billie Jean did, she did it all the way. She's gonna run, she's gonna run fast. When she ran, <laughs> when she ran, she ran fast. When she played, she played hard. Billie Jean dreamed of growing up to be just like her hero, Mickey Mantle. One day, her father took her to a baseball game. Billie Jean realized something terrible. All the players on the field were men. What was a girl who loved sports supposed to do? So she liked running. She liked playing hard. And then when she went to a baseball game, she realized that there weren't any women players. How about tennis? Asked her parents. Girls play tennis. Billie Jean had never heard of tennis. But if she could run and jump and hit a ball, it sounded good to her. She saved up her nickels, dimes, and pennies, bought a tennis racket, and went off to a lesson at the public park. On her very first swing, she hit her ball over the net. From then on, it was tennis all the way for Billie Jean. So her parents suggested a sport that might be suitable for girls. And Billie Jean saved up. She did what it took to get to the tennis courts and fell in love on the first serve. Billie Jean learned fast. Soon she was ready to play in her first tournament. On the big day, she wore the nice white tennis shorts her mother had sewn. But when the players gathered for a photo, Mr. Jones, the man in charge, told Billie Jean to stand aside. Girls were supposed to wear a dress or skirt. Peanut butter, grumbled Billie Jean. She would show them all what really mattered wasn't what she wore, but how she played the game. So all the other girls on the tennis team have skirts on, but Billie Jean's mother had sewed shorts for her, and her coach said, you can't be in the picture like that. And she said, it's not about what I wear. <clears throat> Billie Jean practiced more than ever. She ran faster. She played harder. After three years, she was so good, Mr. Jones agreed to let her go to the national championship. If, if. She could beat the one girl she had never beat before. When Billie Jean walked out onto the court, the net looked very high. The other girl looked very far away. Billie Jean bounced the ball twice for luck. Then she tossed it in the air and served. <clears throat> the match didn't last long. Even Billie Jean was surprised. Not only had she won, she had done it in just two sets. She was going to the Nationals, all the way across the country in Ohio. But she couldn't go alone. Mr. Jones said, girls have to have a chaperone. Two airplane tickets? Billie Jean could barely pay for one. She and her mother had to take the train instead, a three-day ride. <coughs> so the other, kit, other, other players that are boys can go by themselves on this trip, but the coach says girls need a, a chaperone, someone to watch them. And Billie Jean can't afford two plane tickets, so they take a train even though it takes longer. 
By high school, she was one of the best teenage players in America. But no one paid any attention to girls' sports. Hardly anybody noticed when Billie Jean left for England two days before graduation. She was going to compete at the most famous world, mo- I'm sorry, the most famous, most important tennis tournament in the whole world. The fans at Wimbledon loved Billie Jean. They looked forward when she charged up to the net to smash the ball. They laughed at the way she yelled peanut butter when she missed a shot. They applauded when she tossed her racket in the air after she won the match. <clears throat> so she's quite a good tennis player, but nobody knows it because people don't pay attention to girls' sports. <clears throat> But at the big famous tournament, they loved her. Still, back at home, no one seemed to care. At college, even the worst tennis player on the boys' team got a scholarship. Billie Jean could beat the best of them, and yet she had to work two jobs to pay for school. But Billie Jean kept practicing. She ran the fastest. She played the hardest. So... Most of the boys that are doing what she is doing get some extra special treatment. But Billie Jean has to work two different jobs and practice, practice, practice even harder than before. Five years after her first Wimbledon, Billie Jean won. So she didn't win the first time, but everyone liked her. But five years later, she won at Wimbledon. Being a world tennis champion meant answering a lot of questions. Where did you learn that swing? Do you have any tennis tips for your fans? Are you ready for your next match? But reporters never asked about Billie Jean's game. Where did you get that necklace? Did you change your hair? Aren't you ready to quit tennis and have babies? So they asked men questions about their game. And they asked Billie Jean questions about what she was wearing again and when she was going to stop and have babies. The newspapers called Billie Jean a housewife. In fact, her tennis paid the bills. But women tennis players were paid less than men, much less. And the prizes for the men kept getting bigger while the prizes for women shrank. The men in charge of tennis said it just made sense. After all, fans fans came to see the men, didn't they? Nobody cared about women's sports. Peanut butter. Billie Jean believed fans wanted to see good tennis, no matter who was playing. Eight other top players agreed. Together, they started an all-women's tennis tour. (coughs) So, the... The conditions for between women's and men's sports were just different. And the, the chances and opportunities for men were way greater. And so Billie Jean organized these eight other women, and they went on a tennis tour. They didn't need those boys. Billie Jean sold tickets, talked to fans, answered questions from reporters, Where's your husband? Does he mind that you're away? Aren't you ready to quit tennis and have babies? And still played harder than anyone else. So imagine trying to focus on your job and people only want to know about when you're going to finally quit this these shenanigans and go have some babies. You just play harder. In 1972, Billie Jean won all three of the biggest tournaments, the French Open, the U.S. Open, and of course, Wimbledon. Sports Illustrated magazine named her its first ever Sportswoman of the Year. Fans loved Billie Jean and women's tennis. So she started doing things that no one else had ever done. She was the first sportswoman 
on Sports Illustrated, and people started liking women's sports, and, and in particular, women's tennis. And a lot of that had to do with Billie Jean. <clears throat> Not everyone was happy, though. Once, Bobby Riggs had been a world tennis champion. He missed those days. When he saw women players getting money and attention, he wanted more money and attention, too. Bobby told reporters that men were the best at everything, including tennis. He said any man could easily beat any woman. He said he could beat Billie Jean. Dun, dun, dun! Do you think that could be true? <clears throat> the match was called the Battle of the Sexes, and it was about much more than tennis. All over the United States, women were fighting for equal rights, but not everyone believed that men and women should be equal. Billie Jean knew that if she lost to Bobby Riggs, some people would say women couldn't play tennis or do anything as well as men. This was a match she had to win. So she had to stand up for herself. There was a lot at stake. On September 20th, 1973, the Houston Astro Astrodome held the biggest, loudest, most excited tennis crowd in history. Across the country and around the world, millions more watched on TV's famous sportscaster Howard Cosell as I'm sorry, as famous sportscaster Howard Cosell announced, "Here comes Billie Jean King." <coughs> Howard Cosell said Billie Jean was pretty. He said if she let her hair grow long and took off her, her and took her glasses off, she'd look like a movie star. Peanut butter. Billie Jean wasn't there to look pretty. She was there to win. So even with all this tennis going on, the sportscasters are making it seem like, meh. This is kind of a novelty, and we still think that men can do things better. Billie Jean took her place on the court. She bounced the ball twice, then she bounced it twice again, and served. Bobby ran, but Billie Jean ran faster. Bobby played hard, but Billie Jean played harder. Because anything she did, she did it. All the way. When Billie Jean won, she tossed her racket in the air and the crowd went wild. She won. Across the country and around the world, girls and women cheered. Many boys and men cheered too. That night, a lot of people changed their minds about what a woman could do. And children dreamed of growing up to be just like their hero, Billie Jean. So you can see all the people watching the tennis match from home and cheering on Billie Jean, their hero. The end. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you really enjoyed the story. Billie Jean, how the star Billie Jean King changed women's sports. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. If you're not a subscriber yet, please click that subscribe button down at the bottom of the page and don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. I'd like to say a big thank you to the Howie family for loaning me an extraordinary collection of books and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.